All right, we only have half a camera battery, so <laughs> we'll see how long this lasts. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie. I'm, you can find me at Knit California on Instagram, here on YouTube, and I've also created a Facebook page, so go over there and find me and follow me and like all my reels, please. Thank you very much. Um, we are back for episode five. Um, very, very exciting episode five. I was supposed to film last weekend, it didn't happen, it was a very, very busy weekend, um, and so we're back today. Today is Friday, July 1st. I have the day off of work, which is very nice. It's like 9, 8.45, 9 a.m., um, and what better way to get the day started than to film a podcast and show you all the yarn, all the knitting things. I'm very excited about it. Um, we have a lot to cover today. Not as much knitting, but <laughs> I have a pile of yarn just sitting right here. So um, I'll get more into it later, but I had placed a bunch of orders and a lot of them came in all at the same time this week. Um, it was a great time for them to come in. Um, the last couple weeks have been like really crazy personally, just like a lot of stuff going on at work, um, in the country, just absolute craziness. I'm not going to get into it. It makes me nervous to talk about publicly, so we're not going to talk about it. Um, and we're just going to skip ahead to the knitting. Um, I do have a finished object today. I'm wearing it. Dun, dun, dun. Um, this is not a great shot. You can only see the top of it. So I will insert um, a picture. But this is my finished um, Thea top by Suzanne Muller, also known as she's at Paula M. Strict on Instagram. Um, let me get you the details of this really fast just so that I remember what size I made and everything. Weird. Okay. Okay. So there we go. Okay. I started this top on May 30th and I finished it on June 19th. So it's about 20, 21 days of knitting, which um, for me is pretty fast. I mean, it is a tank top, so you know, there's no sleeves or anything, but I did have some issues picking up the um, iron bands, but we can talk about that later. Um, this was knit with Sandness Garn Line, and this is the like beige colorway. Um, it just says 3011 on the label. Um, and I made the size extra large. I made the size extra large. Um, I have about a 40 inch bust and I, I'm pretty sure the pattern, I think I picked a size larger. I could have made the size large. I chose to make the extra large just to have some like extra roominess. I don't like my garment super tight and with like zero or one positive ease inches. Um, I like to have a couple more. So in terms of the overall fit, I think it fits well. It's not too tight. I think it's a good length. Oh, I do also have to say I have not blocked this yet. Um, so this yarn is 53% cotton, 33% viscose, and 14% linen. Um, I posted on Instagram saying, oh, you know, this is cotton and linen. Like, it, the way that this feels, it doesn't feel like it's going to stretch a lot when it blocks. I got so many comments from people saying, watch out, this will stretch a lot when it gets blocked. Um, they said the linen content, when you block it, the stitches will like flatten um, and the cotton as well will just like block with wash and wear. So I actually have not blocked this yet um, and I don't know if I will. Um, let's see, okay, I was talking about the fit. So. In general, like I said, the fit is pretty good, but I'm not super happy with the overall finished garment. I don't know how often I'm going to wear this. Um, 
For me, I think the shoulder straps right here, I think this is way too thick. Um, and it kind of hits me at like a weird spot on my shoulder, so I don't get like that shoulder definition. If it had been, you know, I don't know if there was like a little shaping on the the pattern, the pictures in the pattern, it's like thinner. Um, and so obviously this is a larger size than what the like sample size is that was made. Um, and I would just suggest if you're going to make this pattern in one of the larger size, just like watch out with how large this is and how large you want it to be. It would have been relatively easy when doing the straps here to just make them smaller, um, I think. Like, I just wouldn't have picked up as many stitches and I would have had a slightly wider, like, neckband area, which I think would have been okay because I think I could have, like, pulled that in when you add the ribbing here because um, this did come in a little bit and I'm actually like really happy with how the ribbing turned out um, on the neckband here. When I went to do it on the sleeves I did have some issues um, so the pattern actually recommends doing like a crochet slip stitch all the way around to help you before you pick up the stitches to knit. Um, so you can find the back bumps of the crochet slip stitches and very easily see where to pick up your knit stitches, which worked out really well here for the collar. Now I tried to do the same thing on the sleeves and I must have just not done the crochet piece correctly. Like I don't think I picked up, you're basically picking up stitches just with a crochet slip stitch. And I definitely didn't pick up enough because <laughs> I picked it up, I did the whole ribbing, I went to try it on, and it was like, it was like, like this. And I was like, oh no, <laughs> we're not, we're not going to do that. Um, and so I ripped it all out and I, at that point, thought maybe I'll just do an I-cord bind off on the sleeves. Um... And I asked the internet and everyone was like, no, you should do... Well, actually, it was like, it was split, it wasn't 50-50, but there were more votes for the ribbing. So, I didn't, I, I ripped it all out and I didn't do the crochet and I just picked up, and I picked up um, every three out of four stitches, which means I would pick up three stitches and then I would skip one. I would pick up three and then I would skip one. And a lot of patterns recommend to either pick up in that pattern, the three out of every four, or to pick up two out of every three um, to help you get a good ratio for sleeve stitches that you pick up. Um, so if you're ever not sure, a lot of times if you pick up one for one, your sleeve ends up being way too large, just like there's a lot of extra fabric there. And so the three out of four or two out of three rule typically works. It depends how like how many stitches you want your sleeve to be. Um, I think of it as like if you're picking up every two out of three, that's like 66% of all the stitches. If you're picking up every three out of four, that's 75%. So that's going to give you a larger sleeve than if you're picking up the two out of three because 75% is larger than 66%. So, I don't know, that's just where my math brain goes. Um, so, that's one of the biggest issues that I have personally with this. The other is, like, my fault completely. Um, I picked this beige color, and this is not a color that I should have chosen. I should have chosen, there was a green that I was looking at, I should have chosen the green. I know that color looks good on me. Um, but I never wear this color because it just like, I feel like it washes me out. So, I don't know, I'm a little bummed. Um, after I finished this, I realized like it was not a good choice of color. I should have picked a different color. Um, and so I was bummed about that and I was sitting with all of my other whips and works in progress, whips in progress, <laughs> works in progress. And I was looking at them all and I was like, uh, I don't really want to do any of these, work on any of these. So 
I had a couple days of just like not really knowing what I wanted to do, what I wanted to work on. Um, and so I'll kind of show you where I went from there. But finish, I need to finish talking about this. So the yarn itself, I absolutely love. Um, even without it being blocked, I feel like it's really soft. Um, I was worried that when I was knitting with it, it was going to start to like wear on my skin, um, give me a little bump on my finger where I like hold the yarn, and that didn't happen at all. The knitting experience with it was really, really nice. So I would definitely work with this yarn again. Again, it's the Sandus Garn Line A. Um, really, really liked that. Would work with that again. I'd pick a different color for me personally. Um, but if you do like this beigey color, go for it. Um, in terms of this pattern, I don't think I would make this specific pattern again. Um, I think there are some really great other tank tops out there that I would really like to try. Um, I don't know when I'm going to cast on another tank top, but we'll see. So that's the Thea, Thea top uh, by Suzanne Muller. Okay, so I have another work in progress, but I'm gonna, here you go, sneak peek. I'm actually gonna talk about these other things first. So like I said, I was kind of like in a funk. I didn't really know what I wanted to work on. Um, on the last podcast, I showed you all of these and I remember thinking, oh, like, I'll work on the heel of this sock by the next podcast. It's not done. I remember saying, oh, I will work on a sleeve of my granny square cardigan for the knit collage cowl. This is the Korean cardi. That is not done. No sleeves. Um, and that's what I had like planned on. And I just couldn't pick up either of these projects. I had no no desire to work on either of them. Um, the sock, I'm gonna be honest, I think it's the yarn. Uh, well actually I did start the heel. Let's, let's give me some credit. I did start the heel. I'm, I'm trying to do a heel flap and gusset. I don't think, I stopped because I didn't think it was right. Um, it looks different than how it looked the last time I did a heel flap and gusset so I needed to go back and like watch some videos and I haven't done that but I also just think I'm like really over this yarn um so this was the yarn that I tried to make socks with last year like I said I think I just need to to part with it um I think I'm gonna de-stash it so I think, I mean I haven't like fully decided this yet, but I think I'm going to frog this. I think I'm going to choose one of the many beautiful sock yarns that I have down here that I showed last time and just try to make a sock with a completely new yarn. I think I might try a new pattern just to, I don't know, have a refresh. This one just isn't working for me, so I think I need to try something else. Um, I will eventually have socks. I'm like determined to have socks. So that's that. Um, my moonset tea, I have thought about reaching for this um, because it is kind of, it is at the point where it's just straight stockinette. So I like really need to just get this one done. Um, so I did have the urge to reach for this, but I decided not to. I decided to do something else. Um, I also have my sweater number 15 that is still on the needles. Gosh, I absolutely love this. Um, but I have decided to put this on pause for right now during the summer. Um, to try to work on some more like summer knitting projects so that's why I also haven't reached for this one yet um, so I was in the funk like I said and I decided to cast on something new um, and I've been working on this exclusively since I cast it on and let me tell you when I cast this on 
I cast this on on June 18th, so actually the day before I finished the Thea top um, was when I started this. And this is, I did mention this I think on the last podcast, but this is the summer souffle pattern. Yee! Alright, so the summer souffle um, by Penrose Knits, Laura Penrose. If you don't watch Laura's podcast, you are missing out. She's literally one of my favorite podcasters. Um, I tested, if you remember, my hot pink souffle um, in mohair. Love that top, love the pattern, and this is the summer version. So uh, she knit her summer version in the Knitting for Olive cotton merino yarn and I would absolutely love to try that yarn but I picked a yarn out of my stash who am I um, I had a ton of lion brand Kobu I still do have a ton and so this is what I chose it's in the, in the colorway denim which is this lovely blue I think it's really pretty um, and this yarn just so you know I thought it was hundred percent cotton and it is not it is 51% cotton and 49% rayon from bamboo. So, that's that. Um, so far, this is going very well. Oh, let me tell you also, I am making the size 6. Um, and I will eventually have all of my details for this in Ravelry. They're not in there right now. But basically... I have a really hard time getting gauge, always. <laughs> um, and so this pattern specifically, um, I think because of the yarn that Laura used is like a slightly different weight, thickness, than like your typical DK yarn or like fingering held double. Um, and so she includes two different gauges in this pattern, which I think is like that's crazy. She like graded this thing twice for two different grade, uh, gauges. One is a 20 stitch per 4 inch gauge and one is a 22 stitch by 4 inch gauge. Um, I sized up, uh, so she, she tells you to use 4 millimeter needles. I sized up to 5 millimeter needles. I knew I was going to have to do that originally um, because I'm a very tight knitter I guess and I had 23 stitches in four inches so I still wasn't meeting the 22 stitches um, and because of that I didn't want this garment to be really tight so I could have made a size 5 um, but I decided to size up to a size 6 so this is kind of gonna be I think a little bit oversized on me but I have tried it on already and um, I love how it's looking so far. The other really cool thing about this pattern is that Laura gives you instructions on how to customize your sleeve circumference for your bicep. So she tells you based on the size that you're knitting, like these are the recommended like you know average garment sleeve sizes. Um, but if your arm is larger or smaller, here's how you can customize that bicep measurement. And so I use that. Um, my arm is a little bit wider. It's okay. That's how it is. Um, and so she tells you, you have to do a little bit of math, but it was super fun. Um, you basically, you know, measure it and you look at she has a whole chart and you find okay here's my measurement here's what size I'm making here's how many she tells you here's how many stitches you want um, my measurement was actually in between two sizes so I had to do a little bit more math to figure that out it wasn't hard I just used the number in between the two stitches she's like here this for this number of inches you want this number of stitches for this number of inches you want this number of stitches I just went in the middle that was it um, and then she says, okay, now you are at the part where you have separated for your sleeves. When you knit around, when you get to the sleeves, you need to make sure you add in the, this number of stitches, like evenly across the sleeve. 
and I did I did that I knit one of the sleeves already and it fits perfectly like this is genius and this is something that you know if I'm doing a pattern in the future where I look at the sleeve circumference and it's not big enough for my arm now I know how to do this so I am so happy <laughs> that I've learned how to do that I think it's like the coolest thing so you should buy the pattern even if you're not gonna make this just to see how she does this so it's awesome um, I also did the ruffle the last this last week is I've been working on the ruffle this thing is no joke and I knew that from the other the mohair souffle that I did but I'm doing a larger size so it was more stitches and man it's a lot of stitches you because you increase a couple times um, one for one so you're just like doubling and then you double again and it's crazy but it's worth it it's totally worth it because this thing is so cute so I did one sleeve I did the ruffle I'm actually gonna work on the body next and then I'll come back and do the other sleeve um, yeah I don't know actually I have different needles so I'm um, you will notice also I'm jumping all over the place here but I'm using my wood likey blush needles for uh, this pattern instead of metal needles was it a good choice I don't know they kind of have been bothering me the whole time <laughs> uh, but yeah I don't know oh what I was saying is I could leave these needles on and put a smaller cord with my smaller needle tips on the sleeve so I can choose and like go back and forth between the sleeve it would be nice to have the sleeve done first and then just finish the body and be done um, but I'm going to a knit night tonight my first knit night ever um, and I thought that working on the body might be better but I don't know now I'm rethinking that maybe I'll want to work on the sleeve and just get it done who knows I I make decisions randomly <laughs> um, but yeah love it there you go oh I don't uh, I think I said this but I've been working on this exclusively since I started it I guess actually I told you I started it the day before I finished this so exclusively since I finished this um, and it's going really fast and I'm just trying to get it done as quickly as possible because I want to wear it it's a million degrees where I live in Southern California and I just want to like I want to start wearing summer fibers to see how they actually like wear and how they feel am I gonna get hot am I gonna get sweaty is it gonna be an issue I want to know so that I can like plan stuff out better like next year or in the future and like share obviously with all of my friends watching this podcast and on the internet so there we go that's that um and that is all the knitting so um let's see one thing I want to talk about before we get into the acquisitions and I can't I don't think I've shown this on the podcast before does anyone know what this is like a teacher asking the class does anyone know okay so story time sort of and a hot tip when I film my Instagram reels in the past I've taken my phone and I have like put it in the neckband I wouldn't do it to anything <laughs> that I've knitted but usually I'm just wearing like a t-shirt or like when it was colder out a sweatshirt I would take my phone and I would put it in the neckband of my shirt like this and I would record myself you know knitting and I was doing this when I was visiting my mom um, and my mom is a macrame artist she loves making wall hangings plant hangers keychains like everything um, and she saw me doing this and she was like, there's got to be a better way. You're like, you're going to stretch out all of your shirts. And I was like, eh, whatever, it's fine. And within like half an hour, she whipped this up for me. And it's a little phone holder and it's got a, a clip, a clippy clip and a claspy hook. And you put it around your neck 
and you clip it and then she even made a little hole so that my pop socket fits in it but you can wear you don't need the pop socket in there um, it works better if your hair isn't like in the way because your hair is all slippery <laughs> or at least mine is and you put it in here like this and then you can record it holds it for you and it's really awesome um, and I love it. I've been using this ever since she made it for me in April. And she sells them. Um, so you can contact her on Instagram. And she has an Etsy shop. Her Instagram is at Aloha Desert Donna. Um, and her Etsy shop is also called Aloha Desert Donna. And some of the feedback that she got from people who have bought them is that they are not long enough. Um, so they couldn't, people couldn't see what they were recording with their phone. And so what she did is she made a second version that has three key rings on it. So you can choose to either have a short version or a medium or a long version. Um, and it's absolutely genius. And I wanted to share because my mom loves sewing macrame and she's very very excited about these and so if you ever film yourself knitting crochet i know some people have bought this to film themselves drawing or you know anything where you're like sitting at a table and are using your cell phone um to record they're super useful i use mine all the time every day almost <laughs> Um, so shout out to my mom, Donna, love you, and thanks for making me something really useful, and I hope others out there, um, can also find them useful, so, yay, love it, okay, we are gonna get into acquisitions, and there are a lot, so, like I said, I bought a lot of stuff. And it's all decided to come in the same week. <laughs> uh, it's crazy. I wish I, I mean, I'll hold, I'll try to hold all of this in my arms at the end. We'll see if I can do it. It's, it's a ridiculous amount, okay? I'm just preparing you because it's a ridiculous amount. And I've shown some of this on my Instagram and more has come in since then so you haven't seen all of it if you follow me over there but let me start with the first one um that i think is really fun if you know me you know that i love sorella yarn um ashley and the team just like her color sense is amazing um the way that they brand their whole business like she's really gone all out and like continues to go all out um, and one of the new things that they have done recently is they have gotten branded shipping boxes and everyone online is just like amazed and very excited about them my husband is yelling he's gonna come in Okay, husband is gone. <laughs> As I was saying, um, they've they've made they have branded packaging boxes, and um, I got one. I specifically waited <laughs> to order a mug so that I knew I would get a branded box. Um, and like I was thinking afterwards, I'm this excited about a box. But yeah, I am. <laughs> and I'm going to show you the box, okay? This is the smallest one they have. It's super cute. It's got a girl knitting in like a camper van, which is just a whole vibe, a whole dream. And you open it. Oh, it says, it says, come on in. And it has a little tear spot for you to tear. You don't have to cut it with a knife or scissors. You just tear it and it opens. Love that. And you open it, doo -doo -doo -doo, and it's a whole like, it's a whole scene. So this is like the inside of the camper van. You've got your window and the little kitchen area with the stove. And um, it's like, you've got your map cause you're going on a yarn crawl in the camper van and you've got your project and your coffee or your tea. 
so cute. And then you open this part, and this is where all the good stuff is, and I have taken everything out, so that's why it's empty. But this, like, yarn mail thank you card is sitting right on top, which tells you a little bit about Ashley and the team on the back. They have wrapping paper that's branded Sorella yarn with her, like, logo and cute stuff. And there's, I'm pretty sure these are like biodegradable packing peanuts in there as well. So it's all just super adorable. Like the artist that she works with is amazing. Um, just blew my mind. And so inside, you've probably seen this sitting right here, but I got one of the cozy mugs. Um, it's by a company called Pinky Up. And it's a 12 ounce ceramic mug and it comes with a micro perforated stainless steel infuser. Hand wash recommended, do not microwave. But look how cute it is. Like, I'm not, okay, I'm not like a mug collector. I'm not really a mug person. I'll be honest, I don't drink coffee. It gives me headaches, I don't like it. Um, I rarely drink tea. If I'm sick, I'll drink tea. My favorite tea is actually just like hot water with lemon juice and like a little bit of cayenne pepper. That's it. <laughs> but um, I drink like smoothies out of mugs and all of that. I don't know, just other liquids, I guess. But it's like a, a knitted cable sweater and um, I just needed it. It's beautiful. I think this is super cute. It has like a little lid to keep your beverages um, warm and it says warm and cozy on it. Here's the tea strainer. I do have some tea. If I am drinking tea, I really love chai tea. Um, and I do have some like loose leaf chai that I could make with this. So nice. And then on the inside um, are some little mittens with a little heart. And it's adorable so I love it I, I'm pretty sure she still has these in the market tab on her website as well um, and in addition I also got three skeins of yarn to make a top um, as part of her summer tonals and excuse me the Mayflower collection that launched most recently she introduced a silk base um, it's 50, 50, 50, 50% 50 silk, 50% superwash merino, and I ordered some from the Mayflower collection, which is not arriving for uh, a few more weeks, and I was dying to get my hands on it before that, so I ordered one of her summer tonals. Her summer tonals are all beachy themed, like super, super cute. Um, yeah, they're really great. And this color is called uh, Pampas. Pampas? Pampas? Um, I think that's like the name of a grass, right? But I love it. I don't think you would normally think that green is my color. Um, most greens are not. This type of green is, and I don't know how to describe it, but I really love this color. Um, this is actually very similar to the color that I was originally looking at for this top and should have gotten, but whatever. We already already told that story. Um, but so yeah, this is the, uh, the Silk DK base. So I got three skeins of DK. They're 231 yards each. So I have, what? 693 yards <laughs> like 700 yards um, so I'm probably gonna make a little, a little tank top a little tea something with this I need to figure out um, something fun to make with this while it's still hot although it'll still be hot through like November December here where I live so <laughs> not worried about that um, but this was yarn acquisition number one I also just want to say it's like really soft, like really soft, and I can just imagine the drape, like even, it's not even like standing up straight, like that's, that's how drapey this is going to be, like when you get 
another skein of yeah this is so really yarn like I'm holding it here it stands up straight I'm holding this one here it does not stand up straight so um, yeah it's gonna be really drapey I'm really excited okay that's number one okay number two I'm gonna show you <gasps> look at this Ooh. okay this is hello Stella fibers hand dyed in Hamilton Ontario Canada um, this is the savvy Stella base it's 90% superwash merino, 10% nylon, 438 yards and 100 grams, fingering weight, and the color is called Dirty Blonde. And I actually got this in a de-stash, so someone was getting rid of it, I saw it, and I said, I want that. I have never tried a yarn like this with these um, slubs, I know they're called. And I thought this colorway was beautiful. And so I think I'm going to make a ranunculus without the lace or a love note without the lace. One of those two patterns. I know I'll have enough yardage because um, this is 870 yards. Um, so I'm pretty sure I'll have enough for one of those two. And I think it's the love note that a couple people have told me they've made with this yarn specifically. Um, and so I'm excited. I haven't made either of those patterns, the love note or the ranunculus yet. I feel like it's on every knitter's like bucket list. You have to eventually make those two patterns because they're so well loved by the community. Um, so that's what this will be. Okay. Love it. Also, D-Stash, like, servers, discords, Facebook groups are, like, a great way to get hand-dyed yarn for um, a cheaper price, like, less expensive than you would pay on the first round because people are trying to get rid of them. So, love that. Okay. Um, let me show you this next. This one you haven't seen if on my Instagram if you follow me um, because I got it after I posted all the other ones, but look at this. Isn't this gorgeous? I think it's coming out a little bit lighter than it is in person, but this is Miami Fiber Co. Um, this was from her Avatar collection. It's called... Eva, E Y V A. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie Avatar, so I don't remember like how to pronounce these character names. Um, but isn't this just like when you picture Avatar? You know, they've got like the purple skin, and in some of the scenes, I remember it just being the whole movie like bursts of color, like the most colorful thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And I remember this purple like specifically from the movie. And um, I'm pretty sure Cassandra from Knit with Nimbus posted this on her Instagram. And I was like, that's mine. I need it. <laughs> I went immediately and bought it. So I bought ugh, five skeins um, on her DK base. So this is the Pembroke DK, which is 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon. It's 100 grams, 245 yards, <clears throat> and this is a four ply DK. But so, um, yeah, it's just, it's gorgeous. It's like a super vibrant purple, and I'll probably make um, a cozy classic raglan or like a no frills, something simple with this to really let the colors shine, because um, it's like... Purple, it's got lavender, it's got blue in there. It's just, um, it's gorgeous. So there we go. And um, also from Miami Fiber Co. Oh, I wanted to show you too. I love oh, the dogs. I love her branding. Um, and I, I don't think I even follow her. I'm gonna need to. Uh, I probably do now. I don't know. I need to go follow her on Instagram. But um. Just like all these crystals and like yarns. I think it's super cute. And um, her name is Lauren. Um, and she sent a little sticker as well. So I love that. I'm excited. 
Um, okay, but then also from her, I got this other colorway, which is very different from what I normally get. Um, this is called Thanator, uh, also on her Pembroke DK base, but this is like purpley, greeny, turquoise. It's really pretty. Um, this one, the label keeps falling off, so I'll just take it off so you can see it right there. But um, I think I'll probably end up making a hat. This might be a hat for my husband, if he's nice. We'll see um, later in the year, um, but probably like an Oslo hat or something like that. So I just, um, I saw this one and I was like, I really like that. So I got it. Just that's what I do. Okay. I have two more. <laughs> two more. Okay. Um, this is the next one. This is um, Fuzzy Peach Fibers in the colorway Wildberry, and I got her Merino Nylon Sock Weight base, so it's 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon, it's 463 yards for 100 grams, and it's honestly so beautiful. I'm pretty sure Cassandra from Knit with Nimbus also posted this on her Instagram. She also loves purple and I said immediately yes that is for me and I went to Fuzzy Peach Fibers Etsy shop um, and I bought this and I didn't realize I'm pretty sure I bought this like right before she launched her own website um, and she's had a she had her own sale. I don't think the sale is still going on, but she has her own website now. So go buy from the website instead of from Etsy because Etsy is crazy. Um, but I got three skeins of the fingering weight base and I got one skein of mohair. Look at it on mohair. Oh, it's so gorgeous and fuzzy. And I guess there's some dog hair on it because welcome to my life, but there's some like red bits or not red but like pink speckles in there too it's gorgeous and this is going to be i already have a pattern picked out you should be proud of me this is going to be an effervescent pullover um from the pom-pom magazine by amy sure amy sure makes um it's this beautiful pattern with like lace on the top and then a ruffle we're in a row we're in a ruffle phase okay and the ruffle is made out of mohair I think that's the only part of the sweater garment where there is mohair and I am gonna be honest I bought that pom-pom magazine for that pattern alone and then I opened it up and I love all of the patterns in that issue um, they're all so beautiful and I think that really like <laughs> really fully solidified my obsession with mohair and fuzzy yarns so um i've also bought uh i'm pretty sure i also bought yarn recently for a cloud bow pullover which is in that edition of the magazine um which is also made like fully out of mohair so but yeah, that's what this is going to be. It's going to be gorgeous. I don't know when I'm going to cast it on, but that's what this is going to be. So, love it. Okay, one more. I told you it was a lot of yarn. Um, this I also have plans for, and this is going to be the next project that I cast on. Um, but just like... Also, if you can't tell, we're in a purple phase here, because <laughs> look at this. These all probably look the same to you also. They're not, but let me show you all the three purples that I bought recently. Y'all crazy, y'all crazy. Okay, this is the Biche et Bouche. Is that how you say it? I don't know, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, Le Petit Lamb's Wool. And I bought this from Le Mercery up in Washington State. It's 100% lamb's wool um, in the colorway light pink violet. 
and I don't know if you can see all the different colors in there but it's like light purple lavender dark purple there's some like magenta bits some blue in there it's absolutely gorgeous and it's extremely lightweight um, if you what is this this is the this is what I can compare it to if you've never tried this but if you've tried this oh the Brooklyn Tweed Loft um, it feels and looks very similar to this if you've tried this um, Okay, that's gonna be a monster to put back at the bottom of my pile but um yeah so I got six six skeins of this purple love it and one skein in white and this is gonna be a Maddie cardigan um, I'll put a picture up right here um, which is a color work cardigan this has little flowers on it, so all the flowers are going to be white. I think it's super cute. Um, and I'm making this for a make-along that's hosted by Rachel from Rachel is Knitting and Courtney at Silly Goose Yarns. Um, They're hosting a steak along So this pattern is steeped, which means you knit in the round like a sweater, and then you cut up the middle to turn it into a cardigan. And I have never done this before. Yes, I'm nervous, but I figured I gotta learn eventually. It's something that I wanna learn. I wanna have the skill. Um, I feel like it's gonna take my knitting. I'm gonna like level up from here to here, like level up like a video game um, to have this skill. So that's what it's gonna be. This is gonna be the next thing that I cast on. I would love to finish my souffle tea and then cast this on. I might swatch before I finish um, because I'm definitely going to need to swatch. I'm going to have to go up a needle size, which is fine because this is fingering weight yarn and I like don't really want to do this on like three, 3.5 millimeter needles. So uh, I'll have to go up anyway because I'm a tight knitter. But I think I'm going to like swatch in the round. So like knit a full tube and then practice the steak cut it and make like a little um, I've seen a couple people have made like mug cozies out of their swatches which is super cute so I think I'm gonna try that that'll be my first cut and if I fail then it's just a swatch and I'll know to do better on the actual sweater so yeah I just, yeah, I'm in a super purple phase. Um, the cardigan, if you probably saw in the picture, it's like a little bit long. I don't think I'm going to make it that long. I'll probably make it to like right at hip level so it ends like right above my butt. So if it gets too long, like my butt's too big and it like goes over and it like looks weird and it feels weird. So I don't think I'm going to make it as long as it is in the pattern. Um, which will be a little bit less knitting, which will be good, but that's what this is going to be. And I um, promised you that I would try to hold all of this yarn in my arms at one time, so um, I'm going to attempt that. <laughs> I gotta, let's see, I gotta move the hair, because that always gets in the way. Okay, I got like half of it. I gotta get these in. I get my green, don't forget the green. This is gonna be the um the picture, my cover for my YouTube video. I did it. <laughs> Let's get oh you got some of the pinks over here. Okay. Everyone, everyone's in the picture. You can see all the children. Okay. My stepson um, likes to call cactus his children, so anytime we pass, like we're driving somewhere and there's like a lot of cactus on the hillside, he like looks out the window and goes, my children, my children. It's hilarious. Nobody knows where that came from, but um, 
Now all these little yarn skeins are my children, so hello my children. <laughs> Alright, um, that's it guys. Um, actually I can, I can keep going for a little bit. I don't know, that's all the yarn. And that's all the um, knitting talk. I kind of just want to like keep holding this, but I'll put it down. Um, keep going until my battery runs out. Uh, and some people on their podcasts talk about what they're watching on TV and what they're reading. And I thought I would do the same because why not? It sounds like fun. Um, so I'll start with what I'm reading. I had been in a super big reading rut for literal years. Um, I had not read a book in the last four or five years. And then um, Kate from Red Door Fiber Studios had her A Court of Thorns and Roses yarn collection drop um, last year. And I had read those books, well, I had read the first three, um, like five, six years ago, and I decided to read them again. And um, that really got me back into reading, and I'm really grateful for that collection and for the community that Kate has created on Instagram, um, just like surrounding that. And I read, I got to read the last two books, which honestly, the last one, uh, A Court of Silver Flames, like, might be my favorite? I don't know. Um, if you also really enjoyed Cassian and Nesta's story, like, leave me a comment down below because I might like them more than Farah and Resand. I don't know. Is that blasphemy to say? Maybe. Let me know. Um, but I finished those a while ago and I started uh, Crescent City by Sarah J. Moss, Sarah J. Mass, and that is what I have been reading now. Um, I'm, oh, I'm 76% done. I, I thought I was going to finish it last night, and then something else happened, <laughs> so <laughs> we're not quite done yet. I will admit, it started off really slow for me. Um, I was, like, getting into it, and then, like, something major happens, and I was like, this happens right at the beginning? Like, I thought this was supposed to be a main character. I guess not. And I had to push through. And then it got really good. And it's still pretty good. I've heard um, the next book is even better. Is there one more book? Or two more books out right now? I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. Um, but I'm really enjoying it. So... That is what I'm reading. I'm a really slow reader, so, like, I'm not going to finish this for another couple weeks, probably. Um, and I can't, I haven't gotten to the point where I can knit and read at the same time. Um, I do enjoy audiobooks. I haven't listened to an audiobook in years. I used to listen to them in the car. I used to, like, drive a lot for work and, like, travel a lot for work. And so I used to listen to them in the car. Um, and I don't do that anymore, so I don't really listen to audiobooks. Um, when I'm knitting, I pretty much exclusively watch TV, so. That's why I'm slow. Meh, it is what it is. Um, but in terms of TV shows, um, Love Island UK is back, and it's finally on Hulu, so, um, yeah, I consider it trash TV, but honestly, that's my favorite genre of TV. It is what it is. I love reality TV shows. I love the like dating shows. I think they're so fun. It's like something for me to watch and I can just like turn my brain off and watch and listen and be excited for them. So um, that's the main thing that I've been watching. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's all I wanted to tell you about <laughs> was Love Island is back. I'm waiting for Big Brother to start. I think it starts this week. And, um, that'll be another one of my, like, summer shows. So, my battery is blinking. It's going to die. So, we're going to end it there. 
Um, let me know in the comments below if you're reading anything great or watching anything great, if you have any new cast-ons, um, if you love any of this yarn that I showed you. It was a lot. And just thank you guys so much for watching, for following along. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you on the next one. Happy knitting!